the Lord to visit you afresh and do wonders in your life. This is my year of favor. This is my year to be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Precious Lord, we are once again grateful unto you for this very first Sunday in the year 2018. We thank you for the years that have come and gone. We thank you for the great and mighty things you have done in our lives. And we thank you for great provisions of glorious things for our future. We present ourselves unto you, O Lord, declaring that by the power of your might, greater things you will do in us and through us in Jesus' name. Speak to us now, even as we, your children, are ready to be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, thank you so much. You may have your seat. You are welcome again to the year 2018. It is a year of uncommon favor for you in Jesus' name. It's a year of supernatural blessing for you in Jesus' name. It is going to be a year with a difference. Get ready. Because your cup will be filled to overflowing in Jesus' name. Uh, this is the first Sunday, and I need to say that you need to hear from me, and you need to hear from our Father in the Lord as well. And that is combo blessing for you. Every day of this year, every week of this year, every month of this year, your blessings will be doubled in Jesus' name. Why you are still saying praise the Lord for what has happened, another blessing is rolling in. When you are saying bless the Lord for the healing, another promotion is rolling in. Get ready because great things are going to happen in your life this year in Jesus' name. God of wonder is going to wonderize your life. Have you heard the grammar like that before? Uh, that, this is a new year, it's a new dawn. The God of wonder will do what? He's going to wonder. Take the God of wonder will wonder lies my life in a wonderful way in Jesus' name. We're looking at the message titled Extraordinary Uncommon Favor. Each word in the topic is unique. Extraordinary means something that is beyond normal. Something beyond ordinary. Something that is special. And then it now says something that is not common. I declare that this year 2018, uncommon blessing is coming your life. You know there are some things that uh, somebody said, I got a job, you got a job, it is something common. Uh, somebody uh, say, uh, this happened and that happened. And it's like, okay, what is special in it? But the kind of miracle that God is going to wrought in your life this year will be such an uncommon one that everyone that will hear it will say, wow, this is your year of wow. It's your year of wonder in the name of Jesus. And then it says favor. Understand, when you talk about the word favor, favor is not so much of something that you deserve. Something is not so much of something that you qualify for, but something that you got out of mercy. The mercy of God is coming your way. The goodness of God is coming your life in Jesus' name. We're looking at the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 28 to 30. Luke, chapter 1, verses 28 to 30. And the angel came in unto her. Somebody this year is going to have an angelic visitation. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. Who is that talking about? 
Thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at the same, surprised at the same, wondered at the same, marveled at the same, and cast in her mind. What manner of salutation this should be? And the angel said unto her, Fear not. What is God saying to somebody here today? No matter what your past experiences, challenges, or encounters might have been, the Lord is saying, This is not a year of fear for you, but rather a year of faith, a year of favor, a year of fruitfulness, and a year of fulfillment in Jesus' name. Fear not, Mary. At that time, it was a message unto Mary. At this time, it is a message unto who? A message for me. And what is the Lord saying? Fear not. He will do it in Jesus' name. Why should I not fear? Why should you not fear? Why should we not fear? Look at it. For thou hast found favor with God. Somebody just means that. I said, you have found favor with God in Jesus' name. But come around, come around, as you look at this, because I'm going to be reading many places, uh, the kind of favor I'm talking about is such an uncommon favor. Favor is something unique. Favor is something special. But then, the angel came and said, Mary, it's not just that you have been favored, but you have been highly favored. Highly favored. Extremely favored. Extraordinarily favored. Supernaturally favored. Praise the Lord. It is one thing to be favored. It is another thing to be highly favored. To be favored is to be preferred over and above others. But to be highly favored is to be preferred over and above other preferred people. Am I communicating? That means the Lord comes around and then he looks at some people that deserve special recognition. Who is that person? The Lord came around and then looked at some people that should be distinguished. Who is that talking about? He came around and then looked at people that deserve to be blessed. Who is that talking about? And then they were selected. You'll be selected. And uh, when the selections were done, uh, somebody here, somebody here, somebody there, somebody there, somebody here. And then they were brought aside and uh, the rest of the people were looking at them and said, wow. What a privileged people. And while that is going on, the Lord come around again and then look at these specially selected people and then say, you, and then say, you, and then say, you. And the angel said unto Mary, thou art highly favored. This year will be your year of high favor in Jesus' name. It will be a special year for you in Jesus' name. Look at it. That's exactly what happened to Daniel in the book of Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes. Above, can you see? When you see yourself being appointed among the presidents, you're happy. You feel elated. You feel joyful. Joyful. You feel happy. You say, I have arrived. And then you're among the princes, special people, special food, special attention, special, special position, special sitting. And then you're so happy. Special regalia, special gown. God is going to close somebody special in this year. With the garment of righteousness and holiness, the garment of purity and of power, the garment of excellence and success in Jesus' name. And while that was ongoing, the, then Daniel was picked, selected, 
appointed over and above the presidents and the princes. And the Bible says, because an excellent, excellent spirit was in him. Excellent spirit was in him. This year, you will not be possessed with the spirit of the devil. This year, you will not be possessed with the spirit of affliction. It will not be spirit of torment and infirmity. But an excellent spirit of the Lord is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. And when that happened, look at the latter part of it. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm, over the whole kingdom, so that no other person will be over and above Daniel other than the king of the land. This is your year. All right? This is my year. It will come to pass in Jesus' name. When God favors a man, look at the man called Jephthah. In the book of Judges, chapter 11, we look at verses 1, 2, and 9. Now Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor. And he was the son of an harlot. Look at that. The son of who? An harlot. I'm coming there. And Gilead begat Jephthah. And Gilead's wife bare him sons. And his wife's sons grew up. And they thrust out Jephthah and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit our father's house. Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house. Thou shalt not inherit in our father's house. For thou art the son of a strange woman. God will qualify you. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, If ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord delivered them before me, Shall I be your head? Let me tell you the story. You heard part of it in verses 1 and 2. The father of Jephthah was married with children. But then the man went out and met with an harlot. And the relationship led to the birth of Jephthah. And the rest of the children were unhappy. Understand, Jephthah was not the sinner. Jephthah was not responsible for whatever happened between his mother and the father. However, the siblings, they came together and said, Jephthah, you are a shame to our family. You are a disgrace to our family. You cannot belong here. You do not belong here. Get out and they trust him out. Are you there? You have been rejected. Your time of acceptance has come. No matter the reason that made people to say, you don't belong here. God will reverse that situation in Jesus' name. And so, Jephthah left destitute. Jephthah left hopeless. Jephthah left homeless. Jephthah left peopleless. Have you ever heard of that? Peopleless. Amen? But God is working something out. Did you get that? I said God is working something out. Listen to this. What people think is an evil they have done against you, pay attention here. Is a preparation for the blessings of God in your life. It is a preparation to get you into the destiny of your life. When Jephthah was thrust out, Jephthah got himself together. Jephthah became a man. Jephthah became a warrior. Jephthah became serious. When there was no help from anywhere, Jephthah sought the Lord. Jephthah knew the Lord. No matter what might have happened, no matter what may be happening, may no matter what took place, 
be sure your relationship with God is never tampered with. Are you with me? Because at the end of the day, he is the one that will stand for you. At the end of the day, he is the one that can turn situations around in Jesus' name. Down the line, over the years, some things happened. The children of Ammon, they came against Gilead to run it down and overtake the land. And they looked around, who shall save and deliver all? Who shall save and deliver us? And there was none other than the man that was rejected. Those that rejected you, they will seek for you. And so they went to Jephthah and said, Jephthah, we need your help. Your enemies will come to bow before you. And then Jephthah said, now you need me. God is preparing somebody for excellence. God is preparing somebody for the throne. God is preparing somebody to be honored. God is about to wipe away the tears of somebody this year in Jesus' name. Hey, God is about to change the story of somebody. God is about to change the testimony of somebody. In the name of Jesus, this is my year. I said, this is my year. I said, this is my year. My year of elevation. My year of remembrance. My year of blessing. In the name of Jesus. And Jephthah said, I'm ready to help you. On one account. I'm ready to, to, I'm ready to be there for you. On one condition. If God, when you rejected me and threw me away, the one I ran onto, the one I clip onto, the one I held onto, if that same God will deliver the Ammonites into my hand, then I will be your king. Somebody here will rule. Somebody here will reign. At the end of the day, Jephthah ruled over them. You will rule. In the name of Jesus. I said that to say, no matter what your father has done, no matter what your mother has done, uh, as long as you don't follow after the wrong step of your parents, uh, you become an exception. I don't care what cause may be running in your family. Once you are a child of God, you become an exception in Jesus' name. David was a king over the land of Israel. And David went out of the way and messed up with another married woman, Beersheba. You know the story as much as I do. And God stepped in. And God dealt with David. But come along. Down the line. Down the line. Things were happening in the lineage of David. Because of the sin of David. And um, the time now came for the king to die. And a new king is to step up. But among the children of David, there was one that defiled the sister, the stepsister. There was another one that was trying to even kick the father out of the throne. There was another one that was trying to usurp authority. But then there was one that was cool and calm. This is a year of coolness. This is a year of calmness. There was one that was collected and uh, committed. There was one that was seeking the Lord among them. While others were doing other things. And why the cause from the Lord upon. Because God said, because you have done this thing, sword will never depart from your heart. It's a question from God. Why the cause was there running in the family? Somebody said, I choose to be exempted. Hey, this year 2018, I choose to be exempted from any cause, from every cause, in any way, no matter the root of the cause, I declare this up here in the name of the Lord. I choose to be exempted in the name of Jesus. And Solomon chose to be exempted. Whatever the father did, whatever the mother did, I didn't do it. 
It's not my fault that I came to the world through them. God, you see, created me. You made me. And Solomon made himself different. And so the time came. For king to be, God worked it out. Even though somebody already got the sheaths of the land, the captain of the land, and some priests in the land, and then they say, I am the king. Hey, if God has not appointed you, you cannot be there. While they were there still celebrating, something else happened. Nobody will take your place in life. Solomon was anointed the king. He was made to ride upon the horse of the father. He was made to sit upon the throne of the king. Somebody is going to sit upon the throne this year. But then it's your choice, it's my choice. How do we know that Solomon separated himself? Solomon distinguished himself because after he became king, he sought the law. Look at the way he sought the building of the temple. Look at the way he prayed, the prayer he prayed. Yes, he made some mistakes down the line, but look at the beginning. God searches through the heart of man. And because of the state of the heart, God preferred Solomon and lifted him high. He will lift you up high in Jesus' name. Of course, you know about Joseph. How Joseph was dispelled, how Joseph was deprived, how Joseph was denied of his right in the father's house, and how he was sold, how he was sold because of the plan and the purpose of God for his life. Pay attention here. When people think they are hurting you, they are hurting themselves. Pay attention here. You know, let me tell you something. I don't care what anybody does. I don't have an enemy in any human being. When you do anything, I look beyond you. I see the spirit behind your action. Whether you are doing well or you are doing wrong, I see the spirit behind your action. Because whatsoever you do, pay attention here. God is going to use you to fulfill his purpose for my life. So, if somebody is doing something and then you are fighting them, you are wasting your time. As a matter of fact, you are delaying your progress. Look beyond the people. Overlook their evil deeds. Deal with the spirit and the devil behind it. Amen? And if it is something good they are doing, still look beyond the people. Because if you don't look beyond the people, you may end up worshipping them. Am I communicating? You may make them to be your God and say, hey, without you, I cannot survive. Look beyond the people. Look into the spirit behind that. This is the spirit of the Lord. This year, the spirit of God is moving somebody up. To cut a long story short, all the 11 brothers of Joseph walked against Joseph. They sold him out. Maybe sometimes you need to be banished so you can be alone with God. Maybe sometimes you need some persecution so you can pray some more. Maybe sometimes you need to be rejected by men so you can know what it means so fast and depend upon the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. When my father and my mother forsook me, then the Lord took over the control of me. Maybe sometimes it needs to happen in our lives. But you know, because we are human, when it happens, we weep a little bit. We wail a little bit. A little bit we whine a little bit. Don't worry. In the midst of the weeping and the wailing and the whining, we will enter into the wonders of God. Joseph got into Egypt, and instead of things getting better, things were getting worse, humanly speaking. But spiritually speaking, Joseph was being prepared for that high favor. Somebody say high favor. Somebody say high favor. You know, 
it was favor that Joseph found in Potiphar's house that he became a key renowned person, ordinary favor. It was favor that Joseph found in the prison that he was made to be the head over the people. Ordinary favor. All the favors you have been getting are preparation for the high level favor. At the end of the day, he ended up in the palace. You are getting to the palace of your life. I don't care what is going on in your marital life. I don't care what is going on in your academic or career. Get ready for a miracle. Get ready for an elevation. Get ready for promotion in the name of Jesus. But then again, understand, it is in your hands. It is in your hands you hold the miracle. Whatever God is going to do for you, in you, and through you, it is in your hand. But this year, you made the right choice in Jesus' name. God looked at the Moabites. And then because of what they did against Israel, God judged them. And placed a curse upon them. But then there was a lady that said, God created the whole universe. He favored these people. He placed a curse upon my own people. What is the way out for me? I will connect with that God. I will connect with that God. And so Ruth connected with the God of Israel. Who are you connecting with this year? He connected with the God of Israel. And when the time came, even though, you know, some people, they say, well, it's, it, it's because this is happening in my family. It happened to A, B, C, and D. It may be true. Some things go on and runs in, in some family. But the point I'm making is, if God be for us, who can be against us? Who? I say who? Nobody can be against us in Jesus' name. Roots connected with the God of heaven. And God remembered roots. God will remember you. He will remember your sacrifices. He will remember your labor. In the name of Jesus. At the end of the day. Get it clear. The same family, nation, that was caused by God, God turned around and brought somebody out from there that became the mother of Obed. And Obed gave child to a child to, to, to a child called Jesse, and Jesse gave birth to a child called David, and then in the fourth generation of David, a child came that is called Jesus. And who is Jesus? The savior of the whole world. Of the whole world. But come, 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 come. Before this could happen, I'm telling you, challenges may come your way this year. Don't worry. Don't worry. The end of it will be glorious. Some things may happen that will look like disappointments. The end of it will be wonderful. Before this happened, Ruth's wife had, I mean, husband had to die. If Ruth's husband had not died, what happened wouldn't have happened. The spiritual state of Ruth wouldn't have been known. The level of commitment, devotion, and sacrifices wouldn't have been known. But because the husband died, Ruth said, no matter what befall me, I am connected with the God of Easter. And said unto Naaman the mother-in-law, Entreat me not to leave thee, not to return from following after thee. Where thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy God shall be my God. Thy people shall be my people. And then, if anything but this happen, let God be the judge. 
Naaman said, Ruth, do you know what you're talking about? I'm an old woman. I can't give birth anymore to any child. Ruth, what you're saying is, is you going with me, you have no husband for the rest of your life. You are still young. Ruth, it means you have no children for the rest of your life. Ruth, it means your people are abandoned for the rest of your life. Ruth said, my eyes are fixed, O oh God, my eyes are fixed. Once your eyes is fixed on the Lord, every impossibility should be made possible. When, once your hope is dependent upon the God of heaven, he turns everything around for your good. Ruth. Did she end up having a husband? Did Ruth end up having children? Did Ruth end up having family? Was Ruth forgotten? Where are we talking about Ruth today? Here in America. Praise the Lord. Ruth was not forgotten then. Ruth is still being remembered now. I declare in the name of the Lord, you'll be remembered for life. I say you'll be remembered for life in the name of Jesus. Time will fail me to tell you about David. How he was left to be in the wilderness. Oh, I'm trying to get into some revelation right now. Do you know why David was the one and the only one left in the wilderness? David came from whose lineage? The lineage of Ruth. Are we together? Ruth was a Moabitess. Am I, am I right? Out of all the children of Jesse, David was the one that looked different. She looked like a Moabite. And so she was disconnected from the other children. She was separated from them. She, he, sorry, he, he was not allowed to even be in the battle with Saul. Pay attention. David knew about battle. Go back and read your Bible. When David was being recommended to Saul, Saul was told that David is a man strong in battle. Though a youth was he. We almost think David didn't know about battle. Go back and read your Bible. Because of his look, because of the kind of hair he had, because of David's complexion, go back all this again in the Bible. David was separated. Listen to this. Everything that made man to separate you will be a separation unto honor. When the appointed time of God came, David was remembered. You will be remembered. I say you'll be remembered. I say you'll be remembered in the name of Jesus. David was remembered. He was remembered. No wonder. Nehemiah in chapter 5 of uh, verse 19 of Nehemiah. He, he got to a point he prayed. He prayed. He said, think upon me my God for good. You know what that means? He said, oh Lord, remember me for favor. He said, think upon me for good according to all that I have done for these people. You labored on them. You did your, your best. They turned around to stab you. Don't pray against them. Don't curse them. Am I communicating? All you need to pray, Lord, according to the good I have done, remember me. Will he remember you? He will remember you in Jesus' name. Psalm 102 verse 13. Psalm 102 verse 13. Thou shall arise. On your behalf, God will arise. And have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her. Yea! The set time. Is when? It's now. It's now. It's now. Year 2018 is your time. Year 2018 is my time. Year 2018 is our time in Jesus' name. 
Verse 14, for thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Thy glory. Thy glory. Very quickly, and I'm going to run through this. I'm going to look at uh, selective promises for uncommon favor. Selective promises for uncommon favor. I will look also at scriptural prerequisites for uncommon favor. Scriptural. You know, some people they 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 they, 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 they want blessing, but they are not going through the right way. They want to get into the house, but they are not going through the door. They want to go through the window. They want to climb through the roof. And that's why I want to look at what are the scriptural prerequisites. Some people are good with fasting and prayer, but without holiness and righteousness in their lives. And they forgot that God is holy, righteous, pure, and uh, upright. And that God is of a more pure eyes than to behold iniquity. So we're going to look at that. And finally, we look at supernatural power of uncommon favor. When that power comes upon you, what do we see in you? What's the first point? Selective promises for uncommon favor. You know, the Bible says that God that Noah found favor in the sight of God. He found favor in the sight of God. That's Genesis chapter 6 verse 8. But then, Psalm 5 verse 12 says, For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. I thought I would hear an amen. For thou, O Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. Will thou compass him as with a shield? You know, when the Bible says, with favor, will thou compass him. What does it mean to compass? Surround surround. That means when you turn to the right, I can't hear somebody. When you turn to the left, when you look back, when you look up, when you look forward, all around you, this is a year of favor. Psalm 84 verse 11, for the Lord God is a son and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold, withhold from them that walk out uprightly. He say that the promise is there for you. The promise is there for you. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Your job is just walk upright. And all the blessings of God will come upon you in Jesus' name. Psalm 30, verse 5. For his anger endured but a moment. In his favor is lie. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. This is your year, the morning of your joy. Amen. You know, when you say morning, you know our retreat? Done. Am I right? The done, the beginning of a new thing in your life. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 11. Isaiah 58, 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. How often? How regular? Continually. In the morning? Continually. At noon? In the evening? In the middle of the night? And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drawing. And make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. You will not fail. You will not fall. You will not falter. Psalm 102, verse 13. Thou shall arise. Thou shall arise. Thou shall arise. And have mercy upon Zion, for the time to favor her. Is now. Point number two. Scriptural prerequisites for common favor. Scriptural prerequisites for common favor. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. My son, 
attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying. Pay attention to everything I'm going to tell you. There is no shortcut to getting favored by the Lord. Just follow the rule and favor will come automatically in Jesus' name. So, with you listening, Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, it says, The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotan, Ahaz, and Ezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. For the Lord hath spoken. Did you get that? What did I just say? For the Lord has spoken. Not that God is going to speak concerning your situation. He spoke already. For the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children. And they have rebelled against me. And they have rebelled against me. The Lord has spoken and said, Iniquity and transgression are unacceptable unto him. Rebellion and disobedience, self-will and stubbornness are unacceptable unto him. Waywardness and worldliness are unacceptable unto him. The Lord has spoken. No matter what any man may be saying, God has spoken. I am holy. And you must be holy because I am your God and I am holy. If you're going to walk with me, we must be together in holiness and righteousness. Whether you're a man or woman, whether you're young or old, whether you're a student or a worker, there must be holiness. And God will grant it unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, let me quickly tell you something. By the time you get to the chapter 6 of Isaiah, the Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, then Isaiah saw the Lord on the throne in the beauty of his holiness. Pay attention here. Many a times we have concluded that, well, Uzziah was a problem in the life of Isaiah, Hindering him from whatsoever, you are wrong. The Bible was just telling us that the prophet Isaiah ministered through the era of King Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. And God is now saying that the timing of this revelation was after the death of King Uzziah. Are we together? When you look at the life and the account of Isaiah, he's been a man of God. When you come to that Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, tell, talking about the rebellion of the people, verse 18 says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Verse 20, but if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured. I pray the Lord himself will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That is why we are told in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be what? Converted. And be converted. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, eh, so that your sins may be blotted out, and eh, the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. So these are the requirements. There must be genuine repentance. Don't just brush your sin under the carpet. Don't, don't just assume it is okay. Until there is genuine repentance, there must be transparent holiness in your life. 
transparent holiness. It is one thing to repent of your sin. It is another thing to continue to live a holy and righteous life. If your all sins are forgiven, you are not expected to now begin to live in iniquity and transgression anymore. Transparent holiness. There must be a demonstrable, a demonstrable restitution. Restitution. Practical restitution, not just a theoretical one. There must be daily devotion to worshiping God. I told you about Jephthah. Jephthah, even though has been abandoned, by the time they came to him, he connected, he connected them with the God. He said, it's only God that can give the victory. Solomon, we saw, it was God. Ruth, it was God. David, it was God. Make sure every day of your life, you worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. Coming to church alone is not enough. Telling the world I go to deeper life is not enough. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Being a pastor is not enough. Being a pastor's wife is not enough. Being a pastor's child is not enough. Being a worker in the church is not enough. Being a sectional leader, a music director is not enough. The head usher is not enough. I am the one in charge of the media in our church. That is not enough. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord is our watchword and song. Holiness unto the Lord as we are marching on. Sing it, shout it loud and clear. Holiness unto the Lord now and, and forever. That I am in America does not diminish the holiness of God. That I have a big job, position, or title does not diminish the holiness of God. If God could deal with David, whom God said is a man after his own heart, God will deal with anybody. Holiness, holiness. So, understand there is daily devotion. Daily devotion. There must be divine connection with God through prayer. Be a man of prayer this year. Be a woman of prayer this year. You say, I am a student. Be prayerful. Don't take things for granted. Don't follow after the pattern of the people of this land. There are people in this land that are still holy, righteous, and upright. Follow after good example. You must live a dedicated, godly life. Life of loyalty. Life of faithfulness. Life of diligence, not laziness. Life of humility, steadfastness, enthusiasm, or passion for God and the glory of God. Live that life. Let your light so shine before men that they may see and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Make sure you get involved in the devoted service in an explicit way. What are you doing for the Lord? Let your life be a blessing. Get involved in the work of the Lord if you are born again. If you are not yet born again, what are you holding on to? What is holding you back? What is hindering you? If you die, you will end up in hellfire. Get born again and get involved in the work of the Lord. And how can you say, I am involved in the work of the Lord when there is no assignment for you? Are you an officer without portfolio? God is looking for evangelists in the church. Be one of them. God is looking for prayer warriors in the church. Be one of them. God is looking for, uh, for people that can play musical instruments in the church. Be one of them. And the Lord will count you worthy in Jesus' name. All the people I told you about, something was unique about them. All that I listed were all unique about them. In addition to that, they were all men of faith. They had faith in God. And that's why God said, fear not, fear not, fear not. When you believe God for anything this year, favor will find you in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 1 verse 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. 
And Mark chapter 9, verse 23 says, For if thou can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. If you believe, this is your year in Jesus' name. And I need to let you know that it is the will of God for you to be favored. But the ball is in your court. Finally, finally, supernatural power. Supernatural power of uncommon favor. Not just for uncommon favor, but of uncommon favor. When you have it, great things will be happening in your life in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 5. Look at and look at look at what is said there. And thou shalt speak and say, Before the Lord thy God, a Syrian ready to perish was my father. And he went down into Egypt and sojourned there with a few and became there a nation. Great. Can you see there? Mighty and populous. It's happening in your life. I said it's happening in your life. By the grace and the power of the Lord. It's happening. I don't know your I said a Syrian. A Syrian was my father, ready to perish. What's about your current situation? Understand. God is saying, I will do a new thing. This is your year of new thing in Jesus' name. Chapter 39 of Genesis. Genesis chapter 39. Verse 21. 39, 21. While you are opening there, let me tell you that Samuel was a little boy. Like we have little children here today. And these little children ranges from uh, zero age to whatsoever age you call children. And Samuel as a child was favored by the Lord. And our children will be favored by the Lord. And Joseph was a teenager, and Daniel was a teenager, and, uh, uh, and Esther in uh, Shishan was a teenager, and yet they found favor before the Lord. All our teenagers and youth this year, I declare and decree, you will find favor before God in Jesus' name. But the ball is in your court. How about our young adults? Young adults. Get ready. This is a year of testimony in Jesus' name. That school, you will graduate. That board exam, you will pass it. In the name of Jesus, whatsoever your desire may be, and those of you that are old enough for marriage, and nothing seems to have happened, this is your year. Your year of testimony. Your year of turning point. Your year of progress in Jesus' name. You know, the Bible says, the Bible, the Bible says, uh, 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 that you'll find that in Proverbs chapter 18, I believe, verse 22, that whosoever that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. What are you looking for? I said, what are you looking for? Good thing. And then the Bible says, uh, and that's where I'm going, and obtains the favor of the Lord. You know what? The kind of a woman you don't even deserve is what God will give you. The kind of a husband that you don't deserve, God will give unto you in Jesus' name. Because he says, and obtains the favor of the Lord. Of the Lord. Are you, not, are you in Genesis now? Genesis 39, what verse? But the Lord was with Joseph. Who is Joseph here today? Joseph then represents somebody here. I said, who is Joseph here today? Amen. But the Lord was with Joseph. And showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Of the prison. When a man finds favor with God, he does uncommon things, he does extraordinary things, he does supernatural things, he does unusual things, he does unexpected things. He does strange things. He does astonishing things. He does special, exceptional, incomparable things. Now, when things like that are happening, whatsoever you do becomes imitable. People want to imitate you. This year, people will be imitating you. Amen? And whoever is trying to imitate you, please don't stop them. Because the more they imitate you, the more your glory shows. 
the more your light shines in the name of Jesus. You know, Psalm 1, verses 1 to 3 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinner, nor seated in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the Lord of the Lord. And in his Lord does he meditate, how often? Day and night. And he shall be like what? A tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he dwells shall. Whatsoever he dwells shall. What kind of a year is this for you? I can hear somebody. I can hear somebody. Year of prosperity. I declare in the name of the Lord you will prosper. In the morning you will prosper. At noon you will prosper. In the night you will prosper. Wherever you turn, prosperity will follow you in Jesus' name. Whatever he doeth, shall, shall, shall prosper. You will prosper. I said you will prosper. I have many more, but my time is gone. A lot of promises of God I listed here for you. Listed here for you. Why don't you rise upon your feet? Because this is your year of prosperity. Your year of divine protection. Your year of supernatural provision. Your year of promotion. It's a year of preservation. It's a year of peace and of joy. This is the first Sunday. Sunday is the first day in a new week. Why don't you make this to be a day of new beginning in your life? A day of turning point in your life? A day of commitment and consecration. A day of devotion. A day of the Lord. Make it your day. Make it your day. This is a new year. A new relationship with the Lord. A new service to the Lord. A new love for the Lord. A new life in the Lord. The year of increase. Jesus increase in wisdom and stature. And in favor with, the, with God and with man. Tell the Lord I will increase in wisdom. I will increase in knowledge. I will increase in understanding. Then will you be blessed within and without. Is there any sin in your life? Is there any transgression in your life? Is there any iniquity in your life? Do you tell lies? Do you deceive? Repent of it. Repent of it. Call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. This is a time of prayer. You are not praying to man but to God. Children should pray. Children should pray. All the youth should pray. Young adults should pray. Daddies and mommies should pray. Everybody should pray. Examine yourself, examine your life. If indeed you want this year to be your year of uncommon favor, your year of supernatural favor, your year of victory over the forces and powers of darkness, because when favor comes, you have victory, all run victory. When favor comes, you have the guidance and the direction of the Holy Ghost. But not without righteousness and holiness, purity and uprightness. Not without humility. Not without consecration and commitment. In 
Jesus name we pray all eyes closed please you want this year to be a special year for you a year of uncommon favor extraordinary favor a year of mercy a year of goodness a year of blessing but then you know you cannot get all those things without righteousness holiness and purity because god is holy and you are saying oh lord oh god today i'm repenting of all the wrongs i have done and i'm renouncing everything yes last year it was rising and falling but this year lord i'm starting afresh new year new relationship with god you are there and you say lord here am i take over my life if you raise up your hand i want to pray with you i want to join my faith with your faith god bless you thank you thank you thank you god bless you god bless you thank you god bless you we don't have too much of time those of you with your hands up just lay those hands upon yourself and then just speak to yourself and say lord jesus i'm sorry i'm sorry although i did this before but I realized I slid back, which is called backsliding. I went back into my old vomit. But Lord, I know you're a merciful God. You said, though my sins be as scarlet, shall be as white as snow. I confess then to you, mention to God the wrong things you know you are doing. I renounce them today. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me, O Lord. I surrender to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I hand over to you the brothers and the sisters that have just indicated their willingness and readiness to begin afresh with you in newness of life, in uprightness and holiness. O Lord, O God, I pray, even as they have repented, forgive them in Jesus' name. Pardon their iniquity. Overlook their transgression. Bring them into the fold afresh and put your seal upon their life. Put their names in the book of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now we are going to pray for that thing called uncommon favor. Extraordinary favor. Begin to talk to God on your own behalf. What are the things you need from God? That humanly, humanly speaking, they are impossible. Humanly speaking, they are not easy. But you are saying, Lord, this is my year. This is my year. This year will not pass me by. Get this message. Listen to it again and again. Until you receive your miracle. You are there. You are trying to start something new. The grace to do it is sufficient. It's available. The power to do it is available. The guidance of the Holy Ghost is available. You are confronted with challenges in your life. Victory is available. You need employment because of favor. It is available. You need a new spiritual encounter. By the power of the Lord, it is available. Favor, uncommon favor. You need promotion in your life. Academic success, matrimonial success, career success, success in your family. Favor will make them happen. Favor will make them happen. Tell the Lord you need a turning point. You need a transformed life. You need a restored blessing. 
I told you, you need faith. Believe the Lord, believe his prophets. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I come before you. This is a new day. In a new month. In a new year. Father, this is the very first Sunday in this year. The very first Sunday in this month. I declare today that in everything, your children will be remembered first in Jesus' name. When blessings are being distributed, when healing is being distributed, when divine provisions are being distributed, make your people number one recipient of grace in Jesus' name. Whatever the old experiences and encounters might have been in their life, you said, Behold, I make all things new. This year, oh God, I pray new things will happen to your people in Jesus' name. New endeavors, new accomplishments, uh, new elevation, new promotion, new peace and joy, new progress, uh, new endeavor. Do it in Jesus' name. And for those brothers and sisters, that are mature enough to get married without anything happening. This year, open doors for them in Jesus' name. Set to them, O Lord. Establish them, O God, in the name of Jesus. Those that have been struggling for that examination, again and again, without any success, I declare this year, uncommon favor, grant unto them in Jesus' name. Those that have been living in poverty and in penury. They have been in the country for many years without anything to show for it. Dear Father, Lord God, I pray you that reverse the status of Jephthah, the status of Solomon, the status of David, Holy Ghost, reverse your situation now in Jesus' name. You remember all these people. You took their sorrow and sadness away. You remember all these people. You put joy and gladness in their heart. Holy Ghost, these people of yours, remember them for good in Jesus' name. Whatever they lay their hands upon to do this year, Father, bless in Jesus' name. In the morning, prosperity. At noon, prosperity. In the night, prosperity. On the job, prosperity. In the church, prosperity. All around, prosperity. Make it our portion this year in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.